two summers ago, I did a unit of CPE. And I remember I had a client, a Christian woman, and we would have these long, beautiful conversations with her about what Jesus meant to her. And she would talk about being saved. She would talk about salvation. And I remember listening very intently because I was trying to understand what that meant. I understood what it meant for her, but what does it mean for me? And what does it mean as a Jew to be saved by God? Do we have a salvation in Judaism? And I remember speaking with the rabbi who was my supervisor. And she said, David, of course, there's being saved in Judaism. It's all throughout the high holiday liturgy. And I didn't really know what that meant until I started looking at this Selichot liturgy. And I see sentences here like Mochel Avonot Amo, which is pardoning the sins of thy people. And I see here, Vesalachta la Avonot Ulechatatenu Unechalatanu forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin and clearing those who repent. This is something about Judaism that I really love. God will always forgive us for our sins. God forgives, forgives even the worst of people as long as that person repents, does teshuva, seeks forgiveness. For me, that's personally a very deep comfort. And I thought to myself, after I sort of realized this, still, being saved? What does that mean? Am I worried that God would not forgive me? And if so, what's the punishment of that? What happens if God doesn't forgive me? And here's the thing. I'm going to give my own personal interpretation. There's not a lot in, I would say, modern Judaism that gives us gleanings into the afterlife. The Christians have hell, and that's very clear for them. They do wrong, they go to hell. Jews, we don't exactly think like that. So what I think this is, is all about the present. I think it's not about the life to come. It's not about Olam Haba specifically, at least at 36 years of age, that's not what I'm thinking. It might change next year. What I am thinking is that God needs us to make good now. And that means doing teshuva, repenting for our sins, feeling truly sorry and seeking forgiveness, going to the people that we have done wrong to and saying, I feel badly because I realize how much this hurt you. And I want to know what I can do to make good reparations. I'm about to sing the prayer, Shema Kolenu. God, hear our voices. Listen to our voices. And I'm realizing that this prayer, it isn't really, for me, it's not about God hear me. Yes, I do have a sense that I want God to hear me, but really, I want myself to be heard by myself. I want to forgive myself. I was really upset with my partner the other day. I was really annoyed that he had called me out on doing some things that were inconsiderate. And I was so angry at him, and I didn't really understand how could I possibly be angry at this person? And I realized this is misplaced anger. What it was was I was angry at myself. I was angry at myself for letting this happen. And when I say Shema Kolenu, what I'm saying is, David, forgive yourself. David, forgive yourself. You didn't mean to do it. You are learning. You are a person. And if you can forgive yourself, God will forgive you. There's also a sentence in here that really grips me. Al tashlichenu le'et zikna. Do not cast us off in our old age. So what does that mean? I think what it means is 
I don't want to be forgotten. I don't want to be forgotten. And I want to be remembered for the good things that I've done and for the people that I've connected with in a positive way. And as I chant this prayer, I encourage each of you to really ask yourself, when you say Shema Kaleinu, what are you really asking for? Who are you really talking to? For me, I'm really talking to myself. David, forgive yourself. It's human.